Hello guys, this is Fairway Finder 14. I'm bringing to you a crankbait special. Um, I want to go over the raw, the reel, the line that I use, and also the um, various crankbaits that I've had a lot of success with. Right here is my crankbait setup. Nothing too terribly fancy. I have an Abu Garcia Silver Max reel that is a 6 4 to 1 ratio. Um, I'll have that on a Berkeley Cherry Wood rod. Has a seven foot rod, it's medium with a fast action tip. Now this is not a glass rod, but it does have a hybrid design, so it is a very sensitive rod with a very good backbone as well. I have 12 pound fluorocarbon on this. That is very important whenever it gets to crankbait fishing. That allows the crankbait to get down to its specific depth accurately. Um, you get a lighter line on there, you go down a little bit deeper, you get a heavier line on there. Um, keep it a little bit shallower. So depending on how you want to use your crankbait, you can go up to about 20 pound fluorocarbon without um, it being a little bit too crazy. Right now, I actually have a Spro Little John 50 on there. Um, have not used it yet. I'm going to be using it soon, and I'm going to have that a uh, um, a review on that. Spro is a very good company. I've heard a lot about them but I've yet to use their frog or their um, little John crankbait. So I'm pretty excited about using them. So that's my rod setup. Now, one thing I want to do is make sure that I stress that you don't need an expensive setup. A lot of people are focusing on the $150 rods and the $150, $200 reels. I tell you what, these rods, these cherry wood rods work phenomenally. Next ones that do really good are the Berkley Lightning Rods. They're also really good too, and they're pretty light as well. Um, now it's not <clears throat> it's not too bad a weight for crankbait, but if you're going to use it for like top water, um, this cherry wood actual um, the Berkley cherry wood rods tend to be a little bit heavy, but not too bad. So, but you know this is a twenty dollar rod. I think it punches way above. The price range also the reel is a $60 reel but you can find them for about 30 bucks a lot of places so here is my crankbait box I'm hoping I got enough light here for you guys um, this isn't all my crankbaits but you can these are the ones I use a lot or just keep with me for a specific reason such as these deep diving crankbaits I have a one that goes to 20 feet, one that goes to 17 feet. And you can see the ones at DT20. So, um, <clears throat> let me get out a few that um, work very well for me. I have this Rapala clanking wrap, I believe. I got it a long time ago. I can't quite remember exactly what it's called. This is a four to five feet square bill. I can see how that bill is um, actually bent. Um, I really like the way that this thing um, <clears throat> swims. It kind of rolls on itself a lot like the DT Fats. Um, and this clear kind of shad color is works great. Um, I've had actually a lot of success accidentally on this by casting it out there and letting it sit. Um, letting the um, rings disappear and then reeling it in. I get a lot of blow ups whenever this is just sitting there after I cast it few good ones that are <clears throat> that I've had some good success with and I'll bring out two of them are these two uh, bombers these are both bomber square A's this is a chartreuse with a little bit of blue in there um, and then this is uh, definitely a more natural color um, with like a navy blue and white on the bottom these uh, dive anywhere from zero to three feet um, depending on the line you're using and how you're holding the rod. Um, these are very good skip up under docks if you want to. If there's no vegetation under the docks that you're worried about getting these caught in, you can skip them right underneath docks. This is probably my third one of these colors that I have because I, you know, while doing that, while learning whenever I was a little bit younger, you know, a couple years ago, I'd always hit off the dock post, which is going to happen whenever you're, um, you know, skipping on docks. So... Another one that I have really good success with is, and these are infamous, the Rapala DT6s right here. Um, great lure, really great lure. Has a fantastic action and dives to six feet all the time. Um, and another one, which 
you know, just about any of these will work for you. Um, it is Rapala's, I believe this is their Rip and Wrap. Yeah, the Rip and Wrap, size six. Um, this is in their Sexy Shad um, pattern, or what a lot of companies call a Sexy Shad pattern. Um, any of these lipless crankbaits, any of the rattle traps work phenomenally in a lot of situations. You can fish them practically year round. I barely ever take them off the rod. And I'm actually thinking about getting another crankbait rod specifically for these guys. Um, so I don't have to keep on switching them off. Um, and what was the last one? Okay. Last one I want to touch on is KVD 1.5. Um, I don't need to say too much about them. They're, they're great um, baits. Um, this is the silent one. And it is in their pearl color. I really love the action that it has. I really love how... Um, it bounces right off certain obstacles, um, and that's that's what's really nice about these guys. Um, so that's uh, those are the ones I'm looking at, and I'll use a lot. Um, we do in northwestern PA. You do get a lot of um, just murky water, not too much stained, or not not too much muddy waters. Um, so a lot of the um, natural colors work for us. Um, I do have some chartreuse and fire tiger patterns um, just in case I get into the really muddy stuff. And I've had had that work quite a bit, um, but I like to stick with uh, more natural colors. Even this root beer chartreuse from um, <clears throat> Spro, sorry about that, um, I assume is going to work really well. Um, it doesn't stand out too much, but then on the murky um, to uh, stained water, it's going to shine. Um, so I feel like this guy is going to work very well for me. So, but, um, again, I just wanted to stress to all you guys, I don't, I don't fish tournaments. So there's no reason for me to, you know, spend $300 on a rod and reel setup. This was right under $80 that I spent on this rod and reel setup plus the line. Um, and you don't need anything else. Um, this, you know, this rod really works. It does have what you would call a parabolic bend it has a really good tip on there. Um, and, but yet at the same time, it has a really good backbone for, you know, getting those, uh, <clears throat> getting the rattle traps out of situations or, you know, unhooking or uncatching, um, any kind of, um, flat bills that might get caught up in any kind of, um, <clears throat> debris or anything like that. So, um, that's one reason why I really love these rods. Um, and they're cheap. You don't have to worry about breaking them. You break them, you can buy another one if you really want to. I've yet to break any of these cherry woods. So I have a separate review on them. They're phenomenal. So, but anyways, thanks to you for watching. Like, share, comment. Have any questions, let me know. Um, and I, <clears throat> please, any criticism, also let me know. I don't want to be the ignorant person that's in the situation. All right, guys. Thank you.